Shalom. Welcome to the Shepherd's Light Online Church. Before the service starts, we wanted to invite you to join our chat. The chat is where you can ask questions, share verses, and connect with other viewers from around the world. Just write your first comment and choose a nickname to join. If you need prayer, click the live prayer icon and you'll be taken to a private chat where one of our team members will pray with you. The service is about to start. Don't forget to sign up so you can keep your username and profile. God bless you and enjoy the message. desire, a greater thing to treasure, I'm convinced there's nothing better than living in your love, caught up in the wonder, being in your presence, knowing such a friendship.
the beauty of heaven all around you. Your power and your mercy, the greatness of your Shalom. I am so glad to be with you all again this week. I really miss it when I'm not with you. So I know that this is a crazy time and I'm just praying that you're all well and um, you know that we just keep each other in prayer as we go through this difficult days ahead knowing that God will bring us through victoriously because he loves each of you so very, very much. And just like a parent walks through hard times with their child, just holding their hand, that's how the Lord wants to walk you through this. He'll bring us, he'll bring us through it safely. If you've given your life to him, you're his child. He'll watch over you and take care of you. We don't need to be afraid of anything. Thankfully, our job is only to keep our eyes on him. So let's turn to the book of Titus and see what the Lord's showing us today or uh, tonight. Um, and don't you love how the Lord speaks to us through his word? It's just so nice. So grab something to drink and get cozy. Oops. And... Let's get started. Remember last week, and also when we were studying the book of 1 Timothy, it showed how, for example, Paul and Timothy went to Ephesus to see how the believers were doing. And remember, we talked last week again about how Paul would go from place to place. He was a rabbi, and he would teach in the synagogues, and he would share about Yeshua, Jesus being the Messiah. And so people would give their life to him, to Yeshua, and then they would start meeting in homes and having Bible studies and things, studying the God's Word. And so then periodically, Paul would go back and visit these um, believers and see how they were doing and just encourage them. And so he was doing that. And for Ephesus, he took Timothy with him. But when they got there, they saw that, you know, they weren't having the foundation of God's word. They were just, you know, teaching whatever they felt like. You know, oh, I don't think you should do this. Oh, I don't think God wants us to do this. Oh, I think he wants us to do this. But not based on the Lord's word. And so Paul left Timothy in Ephesus to teach the people the right thing. And in Titus, and it was around the same time, we don't know if it was just before or just after, but it was about the same time. And so they went back to Crete, and which Stephen and I love Crete. It's, the people are so sweet. But we went to Crete, and I mean, <laughs> I didn't, but Paul, and Titus went to Crete, and they saw that same thing like in Ephesus, the believers weren't teaching from God's word. So he left Titus there to teach the people the right thing, encourage them, and then he had Titus and Timothy set up how the congregation should work, you know, with the pastor or bishop, um, with the elders and with deacons um, that were there to serve the people and everything. You can read about that in Acts. And so um, now Paul is gone and he's writing a letter to Titus just to remind him of probably things that they had already talked about and just to encourage Titus. So. Um, we start, let's turn to Titus chapter 2, and I love this chapter 
because it specifies, it's like God has Paul break down exactly what each of us should be doing and the qualities that God wants us to have. And don't forget, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So regardless of what the world teaches, the Lord made male and female. And he made each of us different from the other. And you know, I know the things that are being taught, but they're definitely not biblical. And I was looking at different reviews that scientists say, um, you know, the medical scientists that have studied anatomy and everything, the human body. And they all are saying, you know, males, for example, are stronger. That's just a fact that the majority of males are stronger and it's because they have muscle mass and they um, have more energy usually than women but on the other hand it shows that their muscles tend to fatigue tire out more easily than women's and they said <laughs> I love this one study it said that they think it's because women have more body fat and so they have more endurance, so it keeps them going longer. So I'm like, hey, I'm right there because I knew my fat would come in handy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that. But anyway, you guys, you all know, you sweet women, that there is a difference. And so what the Lord did is had Paul break down for Titus the men and the women and also the older and the younger. And, you know, I've been in both categories. Now I'm in the older. And there is a difference. You know, like in my mind, I still feel young. And I heard a pastor once say it's because God's put an eternal spirit in us because we will live forever. Um, if we've given our life to him, we'll get to go to heaven forever with the Lord. But if we haven't, sadly, we're still going to live for eternity, but in hell. And we don't want that. So my body, because I feel young, it's like I feel like I could stand up right now and do a cartwheel. If I did, aside from you guys dying laughing at me because I wouldn't be able to do it, I'd probably, my arms aren't that strong, so I'd probably fall flat on my face. So... I'm not going to even try. There is a difference between old and young. <laughs> so turn to chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, But as for you, remember Paul's talking to Titus, But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. And by sound doctrine, he's talking about, um, for example, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Yeshua, Jesus said, Go therefore, he's talking to the believers, um, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I, Yeshua, have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all always, even to the end of age. Amen. So here, Paul's reminding Titus, hey, teach these things that the Lord wants us to, the foundation, the right doctrine to these believers. So in Titus 2, chapter 2, or verse 2, Paul starts with the older men. And he said that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. You know, with maturity of age, it, a lot of these traits should automatically come. 
we are more serious. We can be more patient. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easier or that as you're older, you automatically have this. So that's why Paul wants Titus to remind these men, hey, you need to have these characteristics. And they'll know, and I'm sure Titus is going to tell them or told them that they need to seek God and ask him to help them with these things. And I love the part where it says older men should ha be sound in faith and love. Because don't forget, the Bible sets it up where the men are the spiritual leaders and they're to lead their family. And so they need these qualities, these traits. And it's important for them to have it. And where it says patience, to have patience, the Greek word for that is epimon. And it means to be steadfast and active endurance. You know, it's like this endurance where you're active. You're not passive. You're not just sitting back, you know, in other words, waiting to die. But you're doing the Lord's work up until he takes you. And, you know, the Bible says our days are numbered. And God knows when in Psalm 139, remember it said he knit us in our mother's womb. Well, he knew at that point he appointed a time for us to die. And he doesn't want us to waste our life and our time. He wants us to be serious about it. I know this precious, precious woman who's in her 80s, and she just keeps saying, I've outlived my life. I don't like computers. I don't like this. I miss, you know, different things. And she was born in the early 30s. And what a waste. For five years, I've heard her say, I'm just waste, waiting to die. And I keep trying to encourage her, you know, you're healthy. You could be active for the Lord. But even if you don't feel up to it, you can be praying for people. You know, I read an article. It was adorable. It was this man that was in his, I think he was either 99 or 100. And he was bedridden. And he makes, he knits. He learned how to knit. And he makes caps for um, homeless people and for newborn babies and things. And with each one, he prays for the person that's going to get that hat. I mean, what a brilliant, amazing ministry. So no matter where we are in life, and that's what Paul's reminding Titus to tell these men, be active for the Lord. So in Titus 2, verse 3, he switches to the older women. And he says, likewise... It goes, the older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, which is the same as being sober, that he told the men, reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. You know, the Lord knows, he knows each of us. And within this category, each of us are different. And the Lord works individually with each of us. But overall, he knows for the older women, if they've had children or if they've poured into other people's children, you know, and if they've had husbands, then, you know, their children are grown, especially back in this age. Um, women didn't work very rarely. And even now, you know, when you're older, you're retired a lot of times and you don't work. And... It could be very, um, all of a sudden you're going fast, 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 and suddenly everything stops. And you're like, oh, I'm useless now. What do I do? And so Paul's saying, hey, remember, you know, don't, don't let yourself drink to excess. Because there's that tendency, oh, I have nothing to do. I'll just drink some wine. Or... He's saying, don't gossip, because, I mean, don't as women, we have that tendency, and it comes easier, where men don't seem to have that problem. With women, 
it's like, oh, I have nothing to do. So I'm just going to sit and dwell on how could she dress that way? And you know, your mind focuses on things like that. And so then when I see my friend, I'm like, can you believe how this person dresses, you know, da 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 da, or how she acts, or whatever, you know? And God's saying, hey, I hate gossip. I hate deceit of any time, kind. So, for example, Yeshua, Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 36, he said, but I say to you that every, every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. You know, and so I pray for me, and I think it's a good prayer for everyone. Lord, before I say something that you don't want me to say, bring this verse back to my memory. This is a good verse to memorize. It's, like I said, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Because it'll make you think twice before you gossip. So, Paul is saying to the older women, hey, don't drink in excess, don't get drunk, and don't gossip or slander others. But I love how he doesn't just leave us with, don't do this, but he tells us what to do in place of it. And in Titus 2, verse 4, the very beginning of it, it says, they should admonish the young women too. And then we'll talk about what they should admonish. Admonish is means encourage, teach, you know, teach and encourage these young women. So in other words, he's telling them, pour into these young women. You know, and like I said before, we have a discipleship program that we would love for you to be a part of. And it just gives that foundation. And it's women that have known the Lord, men that have known the Lord for a long time and are steadfast and mature in the Lord that are teaching these things. And it's free, it's online, so we'd love for you to be a part of it. So let us know if you want to be. But, um, you know, the second part of um, verse 4 in Titus 2 talks about what older women should be teaching the young women. And so this is what the young women should be doing. And it says, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, you know, not talking about everything going on in the house. Chase, homemakers, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. You know, in other words, be content. If you're married, pour into your husband and children. Love them with the Lord's love. It's not always easy. But God gives us that love to see them with his eyes. And I remember once a long time ago going to a marriage conference. And I heard a woman say, and it's always stuck with me, can your husband and your children trust you? And then she said, when you're upset, and your husband has done something that's hurt you, you know, hurt your feelings or you're upset at him about, or your children have been that way, do they, are they able to trust that even though you're upset, angry, mad at them, you're not going to go gossiping and telling everybody what happened? You know, are you not going to say, did you know that he went out and spent money that you know, I could have spent instead, or, you know, my child just back talks, you know. It's one thing to be asking one person for advice on how to deal with these situations. It's another thing to be gossiping, and you know the difference. I mean, I would be crushed if Stephen or my children talked about me gossiping to others about things that I've done or may have said when I was angry, I'd be so hurt. And so why would I want to do that to them? So anyway, it's a good thing to think about. And 
you know, if you're not married, but you're in this category, there's numerous places in the Bible that talks about how God is our husband. For example, um, the first part of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 says, Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And you know, really that applies to all of us. And you know, there's God brings children, whether we have children of our own or not, God brings children in our path. And to just pour into them and to be praying for them. For example, I have someone that's a daughter in Israel um, that I love dearly. And she works at a nursery, a, a school. Um, and I mean, she talks about these children and she, you can tell how much she loves them. And she just pours heart and soul into them and prays for them and shares, you know, she can't share a lot because of work about the Lord, but they know that what she believes. And so she's a witness to these children and to the people, other teachers and people in charge. So, you know, that's how God wants us to be, pouring into others. And I love how she pours and shows these children that love. And then, don't forget the last part of verse 4. It says, we're to do this so that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And, you know, in Second chapter, in Second Samuel chapter 12, it talks about that. It talks about when, remember when David um, had committed his sin with Bathsheba and Nathan, the prophet, was rebuking him. And Nathan said in verse 14 of 2 Samuel 12, However, because by this deed, he's talking to David, David, by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. So, in other words, whether you like it or not, if you're a believer, people are watching you. They're wanting to see if what you're saying is true about the Lord. They're wanting to, you know, see, is your reaction different than my reaction? And, you know, we have to be careful how we live our life. And instead of a burden, it's a privilege that God has put us in this place. You know, it's not a burden. Because we should be like that. The Lord's watching us all the time. He knows, and when we blow it, which we're going to, we're human, the key is to say, hey, I totally blew that. I'm sorry. The Lord's forgiven me. I hope you do, and I want to do what God wants. You know, that's all we need to do. And this so applies to right now, because we're living in a time that is so, so crazy, and people are scared. If you're a believer then we have hope that others don't, that don't know the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when the heat trials come. But its leaf, leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, in the year of trials, nor will cease from yielding fruit. And what a sweet, sweet promise from the Lord. We don't need to be fearful or anxious. And on top of that, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of our crazy life right now, of what the whole world is experiencing, we, as believers in the Lord, can still be fruitful. And we can produce these fruit in the midst of the trials that other people can see and be drawn to the Lord because of. 
Turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25, and it says what that fruit is. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, <laughs> kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control and against such there is no law and those who are Christ those who are believers in Yeshua have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit you know if we're say we belong to the Lord we're living our life for him we're walking in his path if we're saying that we need to be living that and you know as a believer we shouldn't be wrapped up in fear and anxiety and depression and if we are the Lord is saying to you right now give your fears to me keep your eyes on me Read my word every day. Spend time with me every day. Even if it's a small amount of time, spend time with him. And then he's telling you and me also, praise me. Worship me. Thank me. And be specific. Because I found if I just say, thank you, Lord, for this day, that's okay. But if I say, thank you for meeting me here, thank you for helping me, you know, with whatever, thank you that I can breathe right now, be specific because it encourages you and reminds you of how God's taking care of you. And then the Lord's telling you, tell me your fears and concerns. Pour out your heart before him. And then be still before me. And the Lord's saying this, let me pour out my comfort and my peace upon you. And he will, sweet women, because he loves you that much. But you've got to take the step of taking your eyes off the scary world and putting it on him. And this applies to all of us, whether we're male, female, young, or old. It applies to all of us. Okay, let's turn back to Titus um, chapter 2, verse 6. And Paul tells Titus, <laughs> I love this part, Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded. Now, my daughter Christy always laughs at this because she has a 16-year-old son. And she reminds him of this verse a lot. And where the Lord has lots of things for older men to be like, lots of things for older women to be like, lots of things for younger women to be like, he has one thing that he tells young men, to be sober-minded. And, you know, there's definitely a tendency for young men to act without thinking and oh the stories my mother-in-law would tell me about Stephen I don't know how she didn't have gray hair when she was <laughs> in her 20s with him for example Stephen lost well mainly as a teenager um, Stephen um, he lost partial hearing in his right ear because he was playing with fire sticks fireworks and it blew up in his ear so it's amazing that he was okay and for some reason men think young men think they're invisible are invisible invincible means they can do anything without harm and I love how the Lord knows that and so he knows what we need to hear and he'll show us when we spend time with him each day but this is why Paul says for young men to be sober minded and I looked up the definition, and it means to be rational 
and sensible. So think before you act. <laughs> so then Paul continues in chapter 2, verse 7, and he's telling Titus this, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good work in doctrine, in showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say. You know, do it in a way that they say, hey, he said, she said, you can't do this, but look, they're doing it, you know? Or your speech, being kind, the fruit of the Spirit, no matter how you're feeling. And you can only do this by spending time with the Lord, by His Holy Spirit helping us. And I love the word pattern. Pattern is a continual thing. You learn how to put that those pieces together, and it makes a beautiful, beautiful quilt or dress or whatever. But it takes time, and it takes thought. Be an example to others. And, you know, like we've touched on, the world we're in right now, this is especially, especially important. I mean, look at what the things that are going on in the world, in the whole world. Because of COVID, there's loss of jobs. There's fear of losing your home, of being kicked out into the streets, of not having food, whether to take the vaccine, whether to not take the vaccine, whether the government is controlling our speech and taking care of that through Twitter and Facebook and everything. Um, you know, there's so many things that if we look and focus and and watch social media on that it takes away the peace that god desires to give us and instead we're filled with fear and it distracts us from focusing on the lord and that's what the devil wants he wants us to be focused on the fearful things and you know when people are talking to you about this what do you say? If you're a believer, you have the answer. And the world right now is focusing on all these problems. But remember 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It says, there is no, no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. I mean, when you're scared, aren't you tormented? Aren't your body gone? Your mind is just going a million miles an hour. But he who fears, the verse says, has not been made perfect in love. Remember, because it says there's no fear in love. Perfect love has cast out the fear. And who's the perfect love? It's Yeshua, Jesus. So as long as we're focused on him, we're okay. We will have his peace and love because he loves you so much. But as soon as we take our eyes off him and open up social media, talk to people that are maybe not believers or not following the Lord like they should, then we start stirring up that fear. And we have a choice what we're going to stir up in ourselves. And if you're wrapped up in fear and worry, anxiety, depression, any of these things that are not of God, remember what the fruit of the Spirit was. If you're wrapped up on the opposite, then you know what, sweet friend? You need to turn off social media. You need to not look at the news for a while, not look at Facebook or Twitter or whatever for a while. And you need to focus on the Lord and allow Him to put you 
where you need to be as far as giving you his peace. And he will do it for you. But you've got to make that choice. You don't want to live with fear and depression. Don't you want to live with peace that passes all understanding that can only come from the Lord? Don't let yourself feed into these things. So let's go back to Titus um, verse 9 because we need to finish up. Um, it talks about bond servants, but in today's language, it would be your boss, okay, whoever your boss supervisor is. It says, exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, or actually bond servants would be us, and then our masters would be the people we work for, okay. So it's telling the bond servants, us, to be obedient to your masters, to your boss, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, you know, kind of, oh, I don't think they're going to miss this. I'll take it. But showing all good fidelity that they may, you know, be faithful to them, be a good worker, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. In other words, once again, he's saying, be a good example. Be an example of how the Lord wants you to be. Um, and isn't this the whole theme, it seems like, of Paul's letter? It's so important that we represent the Lord the right way. And, you know, and starting in verse 11, it, Paul kind of shows us, or he does show us, why to be this way. And why we can be this way as a believer. In Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Yeshua died for all men. In verse 12, it says, Teaching us that denying godliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So by present age, it means right now, and it means deny these ungodliness and worldly lusts. You know, yeah, it's fun to, in the beginning, you know, oh, you think like I think, and we both think the world's coming to an end soon. And, and you know, but eventually, if that fear is coming on, then that's ungodliness. And it says, deny it. Go away from it. Don't feed into it. And instead, live soberly, righteously, godly, right now in this age that we're in. And in verse 13, it says, and here's the key of why we do this. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Lord Savior, Yeshua. Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, for you and for me, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify us for himself, his own special people, zealous, passionate for good works. And then in verse 15, he ends with, Speak these things, exhort, rebuke, with all authority, let no one despise you. You know, one of the reasons that we want to be a good example and share the Lord with others is because of verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of God and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. And it goes in more detail in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ, those who have already died, bitter believers, will rise first. 
and then verse 17, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, both the Tanakh and the Ha Habrid Hadashah, Old and New Testament, it talks about the Lord coming first as the suffering servant of the sacrificial lamb that he gives his life in place of ours. Because don't forget, it says that the wages of sin is death. Over and over it says that. Because God's pure and holy and righteous. And he can't be around that. So Yeshua came once and for all, died for in our place. And it's a free gift. In Romans, it says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a free gift, but like any gift, you have to be willing to accept it. And if you've never given your life to the Lord, or if you've wandered away from him, oh, sweet friend, please, right now, just call out to him. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you want to live your life eternally with him. And just keep our eyes on him. He'll take away our fear, our anxiety, our depression. And in place of it, give us his joy and peace. So I just, let's pray for each other this week. If you've given your life to the Lord or if you have prayer requests, we would love to hear it. We'd love to rejoice with you. We'd love to pray with you. So just let us know. And I hope Friday, Pastor Stephen is in the book of Acts. It's the same time as, as now, um, what we've done today. And so just join, please. We would love to chat and get to know you better. So let's keep each other in prayer. And God bless you.
So